What's up guys? Now what you may know is that in 2008, Audi won the 24 Hours of Le Mans in their R10 TDI prototype car. What you may not know is that Audi contracted Intersport and NFL Films to document the entire event on camera for your viewing pleasure. And on March 20th on ESPN, it's going to air in a movie called Truth in 24. Now today, we're at NFL Films in New Jersey to talk to some of the key players in the making of this movie. Stick around. I'm Matt Farah, and you're watching Garage 419. It's cruel, it's long. You have to live in exactly at the point now. I think I've seen such a violent accident in 25 years of racing. That could be the deciding moment in this motor race. This is, I mean, this project was a big undertaking. It was obviously a, a departure from what you guys normally do with, uh, with sports-related films. How did the project get started? We got approached by a company called Intersport mm -hmm. out of Chicago that we do, we have a good partnership with. And they said, uh, how do you guys feel about making a movie about 24 hours of Le Mans. Okay. And we said, uh, we'll get right back to you. And then we went to Wikipedia. <laughs> <laughs> That's what <laughs> I do. <laughs> nice. uh, now, we knew what Le Mans was. I, I did. Did you sort go of watch did. the Steve McQueen movie to, to, to get started? Oh, yeah, uh, passed it all the way around the offices. Everybody okay. had to watch the movie before we before you started working on it. Okay. It's a classic. Yeah. Bennett can tell you, though, what he thought of uh, Yeah, I, I pretty much started from zero. When, they, when Keith was first in discussions with Intersport, I came on a little bit later. I thought, wow, Le Mans racing, that sounds really awesome. I love it when those rally cars are flying over the dunes and kicking yeah. up sand into the camera. That's a great visual. That's, that's not what you Yeah, and that's not, <laughs> not what the movie Although was, there but. was flight of cars. You know, a couple yeah. cars do fly in this movie. Yeah, yeah. That's true. When I looked at it the next day, I realized that there was a big dark shadow of a car that flew literally just over the top behind the car and was within a few inches of taking, you know, our car out as well. What's interesting about the movie is that uh, a lot of the people who are not usually you know, camera personalities become camera personalities. These guys that are engineers and, and you know, the drivers more so, but engineers and, and director of motorsports, these are not people that are used to being on camera or may even want to be on camera. So how did, how did they feel about that? It took time. Yeah. It took a lot of time. We knew that Dr. Ulrich had to be in the movie. He's mm -hmm. the head of Audi Motorsport, and he has a presence about him just when you first start to observe the team. They have to be a little bit selfish if they really want to be fast. But also, they have to be a team player that is ready to share a car with two other guys. Little by little, day after day, we started getting in a little bit. Mm -hmm. And then finally, we, uh, we took us a while to meet the drivers. And then once we met the drivers, once the drivers, the drivers okay with you having well, the drivers car. got it. The yeah. drivers, you know, they all have huge egos, yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah. So when they said, well, here's this film crew, they're going to do this big film. Well, let's, you know, let's get myself so into this go, show. Give me a wireless right, mic, so. Yeah. Once we got the drivers, it, it really got a little bit easier. Look at all the people waiting in the streets. Look at the band. Look at the atmosphere, the passion. We gave ourselves the time to go in early mm -hmm. and really kind of, you know, start to learn the track. Being there for the, the test days and for uh, scrutineering and everything else that came with it, we got maps. We literally would just send our production assistants out when there was downtime and said, learn the track. The biggest challenge for this film right up was the fact that the Audi was so quiet. Yeah. I mean, we do football stadiums and it's loud. But it's uniformly loud, pretty much. Yes, you have, you got a flat bed of a crowd, you know, 75,000 people screaming. Then, you, you know, you're digging out football players and coaches' voices. Mm -hmm. We showed up here and, I mean, I'm used to loud, but these, this, these racetracks were a lot louder. Yeah. We're trying to capture the sound of this, of this, I mean, it's a really sweet sound of this R10 going by. And every other car around it is, you know, four or five times louder. Mm -hmm. So we're waiting for moments when the Audi's by itself. In France and Le Mans, the track being a lot bigger, yeah. we had a lot of that moment. But all the races, you know, in Sebring, in, in Monza, Sebring it, was, it was really tough. You get to about 120 miles an hour and the wind noise over your helmet is more than the engine noise behind you. This week on Wii PC TV. I headed out onto the street to talk to people directly about how computers affect their lives today and what the future holds for our PCs. Well, I had this idea actually where you put on like these glasses and then it has like an 
digital overlay of the real world. WePC TV is brought to you by ASUS and Intel. You dream it, ASUS builds it, Intel inside. The signature sound of the R10 was really, really important to capture because like Kyle said, it's so different than, uh, than the rest of the cars on the track. So one of the most important jobs we had in post was just staying, staying true to that mm -hmm. and, uh, and identifying, uh, you know, these guys brought back so much good material in stereo, mono, surround. Uh, it was a blessing and a curse because it was a lot of great stuff to have, but it was so much to go through and it was a lot of identifying specifically where the R10 was. So our, our job was not as much uh, creating sounds to go with specific shots, but making sure that we use the proper sounds from the library that we, we compiled from, uh, from the race day. Noise is a form of energy, and the less you hear means the more you use in propulsion. It's sexy, this sound. Sex has nothing to do with screaming. Some people believe that, but others make it more quiet, but more sensitive, and that's how we wanted to make this diesel. My job at kind of its root level is to basically you know, support Keith and Bennett's story, mm -hmm. what they want to tell. We didn't use the traditional orchestral percussion, you know, the big snare drums and big timpanis and all this kind of stuff. That, that was made up with, you know, sequenced percussion parts and distorted basses and guitars and things like that. The key with Lamaze was to get there three weeks ahead of time. And scout. And scout, yeah. scout, scout. I mean, we just covered that track like crazy. How many cameras were, were you shooting with? Besides any, any myself, time? four of us. Okay, so four cameras for 24 hours. Yes. What are your favorite kind of shots to use to build that drama? Do you like the high speed mm -hmm. shots or the, the, the close ups of mm -hmm. the you know, detail? What do you, what, there's what do you a great use? shot in the movie of the Peugeot car coming up and it stops right in front of the alley pit. And there is the whole Audi crew staring at this car. And yeah. I'm just sitting there and I'm looking at this and I see the car come. I go, well, let's, you know, let's just shoot this. And it comes up and it stops right in front of me. And I, I'm looking at the shot and I'm looking at the back and here's all the Audi guys and everyone's going like this, <laughs> looking at the car. Yeah. I mean, shots like that. It's yeah. just, you know, there's a, another shot of the Peugeot coming down this straightaway and it, it makes a left-hand turn and it's pouring down rain. And it just it just oh, this, looks this shot I know. Yeah, just I know looks like shot. a monster yeah, car. Yeah, yeah. Just I mean the car was just unbelievable. Yeah, one of my favorite scenes in the film is where um, Alan McNish is watching the onboard uh, footage of the lap of Lama and dictating his thought process as going through that lap. He shows up maybe 12 minutes before the press conference, and he sits down. I talk him through it real quick, and then we hit play. And then he just goes. Yeah, I and mean, he is on fire. The down to third gear. Run the curve on the left. Run the curve on the right. Try to keep over to the right to get a good clean exit out of the last one. Hit the curve on the left. Hit the curve on the right. Wide open throttle on third gear. Fourth, fifth, over the line. That's three minutes twenty-three and over eight and a half miles done. You know, the nice thing about doing documentary films and stuff is that we're working. You could say the best actors in the world. I mean, there there are no yeah, actors. Yeah, yeah. It's real. So. You know, like with football, when you see, uh, you know, John Elway or Reggie White, you know, could have been tragic heroes in sports, but they win the Super Bowl once, and then running around the stadium with a Lombardi trophy, yeah. you can't get an actor to figure out what that emotion yeah. is. And I think it's the same thing in this film with Le Mans, you know, it, it, the story is just great, and I think, you know, at the end, when the race ends, there's still this huge long part that sustains their you know, what happens at the end that emotionally you couldn't get an actor or anyone to do that. Thanks a lot for watching guys. Be sure to check out the world premiere of Truth in 24 on ESPN Friday, March 20th, 8 o'clock p.m. Eastern. I'm going to be sitting right in front of my TV watching it, and that's where you should be, because I'm not going to let you watch it on my TV in my house. I'm Matt Farah, and you've been watching Garage Quarantine. This week on WePC TV. Some engineer saying that Skynet is processing at 60 teraflops a second. I don't know what the hell that means. It's a special like pool dive you can do. Who's Rodney back? Dangerfield does that in Back to School, I think. It does a teraflop. <laughs> WePC TV is brought to you by ASUS and Intel. You dream it, ASUS builds it, Intel inside.